Welcome to the Mentor Series Summary Video on Clinical Teaching. What do the best clinical teachers do? In this video, we will demystify this question. Let's analyze this. The best clinical teachers do five things. They prepare, set expectations, teach effectively with limited time, role model, and build relationships. So how do the best teachers seem to teach so effortlessly? How do things just flow? The answer to this question is the same as to how the best marathon runners make running look easy. It is due to their intensive preparation with extraordinary behind the scenes effort. So how do we prepare for teaching? This depends somewhat on your clinical environment, but here is a brief review of what to do before you staff patients with learners. Number one, read up on your patients. Know your differential and preferred diagnostic and management plan. Number two, identify on average one teaching point per patient. These can be fact-based or based in clinical reasoning. Number three, create questions for different levels of learners that link to your teaching points. And of course, develop teaching scripts as outlined in the video linked here. Great teaching not only seems easy because of preparation, but it's made smoother by setting expectations so everyone knows their role. Setting expectations should be done the first time you meet your learner, and depending on how long you work with them can be short and to the point, or a bit longer and more detailed. Expectations should typically include a global rule, like treat your patients like your mom or dad. That means be clinically thorough with great attention to detail and spend time with them to show them you care. And something specific to their level of learning, like in your assessments and plans, I wanna hear a differential diagnosis for every new or unsolved problem. And importantly, we believe as the teacher, you should always state expectations of yourself, like, I will listen attentively and won't interrupt your presentations. This interaction is also an opportunity for you to understand your learner's objectives during their time with you. All right, so now that we're ready to teach, how do we teach effectively with limited time? To do this, we need two things, an approach to time management and tools. Now, what does time management mean when applied to clinical teaching? Well, time is a scarce resource. To help you, keep this simple guidance in mind. If you have less than one minute, teach simple facts. If you have one to five minutes, then you can teach on topics that require more time, like clinical reasoning, diagnostic maneuvers like the physical exam and EKG, or complex pathophysiology. With this in mind, let's talk about some tools. We'll start with a framework for asking questions because this links nicely to our time management approach. This is a modified version of Bloom's taxonomy that can be thought of like this. The bottom two levels, remember and understand, represent basic knowledge-based questions that do not relate to the patient at hand. Questions like, what is the treatment of acute coronary syndrome? Or, how does cirrhosis cause thrombocytopenia? These are the types of questions that typically take less than one minute to answer, though understanding questions can take longer. The next three levels, apply, analyze, and assess, involve questions that require more thinking and discussion, typically lasting one to five minutes. These are either patient-based or self-reflective questions. Questions like, what questions would you ask the patient to distinguish between, for apply, what is the best treatment strategy for this patient, for analyze, and why did you choose for assess? These questions tend to be used to probe clinical reasoning. That being said, what other tools can be used to teach clinical reasoning? Here are two techniques. One, think out loud. Make the invisible visible. Explain your thought process, what you believe are essential components of the case, how you prioritize these, how this fits into your frameworks or illness scripts, and how you use this to build your differential and inform decision making. Signpost your uncertainty and share strategies to manage it. Encourage your learners to do the same, to explain their diagnostic or therapeutic reasoning. In fact, this should typically be done before you share your own thoughts. Two, use pointed questions to uncouple inherent biases. Like, what about this case doesn't fit your working diagnosis? Or, what else could present like this? Let's review one more tool. One Minute Preceptor provides a singular structure to ask probing questions, teach general facts or clinical reasoning, and provide feedback. Despite its well-marketed name, it takes closer to two to five minutes to perform, but it is a worthwhile investment. To learn more, watch the video linked here. By this point, it's clear that time management and tools are important, but 
are they the end-all be-all? It turns out that what you teach is actually not as important as what you model. So let's talk about role modeling. Role modeling kindness, compassion, and humanism towards our patients and our teams may be the most transformative thing we do. So humble yourself. Communicate with patients at or below eye level. Elevate the status and needs of others above yourself. Make an effort to humanize your patients beyond their disease. Rather than focusing on what's the matter, focus on what matters to them. Learn about their lives, their hobbies, and their dreams. Embrace the meaning and privilege of what we do. And love your patient. Make it obvious by both your words and your actions. As Mother Teresa said, not all of us can do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. And this then leads to the fifth thing the best attendings do. They build relationships. The same kindness, compassion, and humanism you show your patients should also be shown to your learners. Building these relationships is critical to maximizing your influence and your ability to inspire your learner. In summary, becoming a great clinical teacher shouldn't be a mystery. The best clinical teachers prepare, set expectations early, teach facts and clinical reasoning effectively using time management strategies and tools, role model humanism, and build relationships with their learners. There's a lot here, so to learn more, you can watch focus videos from this miniseries. Happy teaching!